yo welcome back to the channel please hit that like button it really helps grow the channel subscribe bottom right hand corner and also ring that notification bell in today's video we're going to discuss money weighted rate of return and time weighted rate of return big mouthful so i'm probably just going to say mwrr or twrr or i might even just say money and time for sure essentially these are two different ways to measure your portfolio performance at the end of the video, we're gonna show you examples of three investors. They all invest the same amount in the same fund. However, the fund performances are different due to when some investors withdrew and some investors deposited. Hopefully you'll leave the video understanding the why and the concept of the returns much better. And also, if you forgot to like the video before, I'm gonna give you one more chance to do it again. Let's get straight into this. On your screen, you're gonna see my personal MWRR and later you'll see my personal TWRR. This is from the 3rd of March, deep into the whole Divock 91 situation. I personally began investing towards the end of November 2018. So this doesn't represent my entire MWRR or TWRR performance. Free Trade do say that they will go further back in time which will give those of you that are like me a more accurate depiction. This is important because I was up around 10K profit and the portfolio was around 25K in value during the time that Divock 91 hit. I dropped to about 9K in losses during that whole period. So essentially a 19K reduction in value. So I've definitely experienced a recession as an investor. As also my ISA was maxed out, Although I had paper on the side which I wanted to invest, I couldn't and I wasn't using any other investment apps at the time as well. So theoretically, I haven't fully recovered from that recession, but as my strategy has changed, I'm rapidly changing that. Some of you that did begin to start investing during that period may see a much higher rate of return, particularly MWRR, as the market has generally been in an upward trend since that period. But in today's video, we're going to definitely explore that and show you the differences between the two. So if you go to the free trade app, you hit on Instagram and you hit portfolio performance you will see both MWRR and now TWRR make sure your app is updated to definitely get both of them as well TWRR has also introduced the benchmarking and they've done it against VWRL which is the FTSE all world ETF which I think is a beautiful way to just explain the benchmarking and for you to see that in action I'll explain why this is there for TWRR and MWRR does not have this later on in this video so what is MWRR and TWRR? Essentially, let's just talk about the RR, which is not Rough Riders, although that was one of the best groups back in the day. Essentially, that just means rate of return. And what that basically means is the percentage rate of your performance return within your portfolio. It's worth noting that rate of return isn't exactly how much you've made. So try not to look at it like the rate of return tells you exactly this is the amount of money you've made. These are just different ways to calculate your portfolio performance. Once take one takes into decision the money you've put in and when you put that in and one doesn't basically take that into consideration. That's essentially the difference. So rate of return is an average rate of return of your portfolio performance. It takes two things into consideration. One money, the second time, and we're gonna discuss the money weighted rate of return now. So this takes into consideration your deposits, your withdrawals, any fees. Essentially, the more money you invest during periods that have a better performance will weight positively overall. And the converse of that is also true. They weight this over the time in question. Do you remember the phrase time in the market it is better than timing the market well that doesn't really apply to MWRR essentially if you are able to time the market a little bit better you will see a much stronger money weighted rate of return and that's the reason why some of you guys that started investing during the pandemic are seeing quite exponentially really high money weighted rate of returns the purpose of money weighted rate of return is to evaluate you as a decision maker as opposed to the fund performance essentially now in terms of TWRR which is the time or time weighted rate of return essentially it doesn't take none of that into consideration it doesn't care about the money the inflows the deposits the withdrawals it only cares about the average growth over a period of time not including your deposits your withdrawals your fees essentially irrespective of when you invest it treats each period as the same and averages the performance to do this it looks at the portfolio over a period of time so that could be years 
years, it could be quarters, it could be whatever period of time, and then it breaks it into intervals, so that could be months, that could be quarters, that could be days, again, whatever period of time the platform is effectively calculating it, and then for each interval, it basically adds it up and it averages it across. It does make it much easier to then benchmark it against other funds and ETFs, and this is the reason why the time-weighted rate of return is benchmarked, whereas the money-weighted rate of return is not benchmarked, because it's used by fund managers typically in the industry and because they don't have control of when you invest your money into the fund, when you make your withdrawals, they can only go by the fund performance as a whole. So when you're evaluating five different ETFs, the returns you're seeing is typically time-weighted rate of returns because it doesn't take into consideration the movement of money into or out of the fund because that's something that a fund manager typically cannot control. On your screen now, what you'll be able to see is the TWRR and MWR at work. So this is the example of three different investors, investor A, investor B, investor C, and those investors all invested $100,000 on the 1st of January into the exact same fund. With investor A, they just left $100,000 for that year. With investor B, during quarter two, they actually withdrew $20,000. And with investor C, at the beginning of quarter three, they added another $20,000 because they had different reasons to do so. So essentially, just to recap, all investors saw a 2% increase in quarter one, all investors saw a 6% decrease in quarter two, a 4% increase in quarter three, and a Four and a 9% increase in quarter four. However, the difference is that investor A just rode the 100K throughout that whole period. Investor B took out 20K during quarter two and investor C added 20K during at the beginning of quarter three. So you can basically see that illustrated here. What you can see is the time weighted rate of return is 8.7% across all three. So essentially the fund performance has been exactly the same for all of the different three investors. However, the money weighted rate of return is 8.7 for investor A because they did nothing. So that's where their money weighted rate of return and their time weighted rate of return is basically aligned and exactly the same. Whereas investor B, their money weighted rate of return is 6.33%. This is because of the withdrawal they made and the time they made that withdrawal and whereas investor C their money weighted rate of return is 10.84% because of the introduction of new funds at the time when the portfolio just started to increase so hopefully that becomes a little bit clearer I will put this link in the description so you can actually browse through and get a bit more information that's essentially the differences between money weighted return and time weighted rate of return it basically look one looks at the money you put in and when you put it in and the other essentially doesn't look at it just remember that your rate of return isn't exactly your total return it's not exactly if you liquidate everything this is the amount of money you've made you can basically just do that by simply just you know how much money you've invested how much money you've made back in dividends how much money you've made if you sold all of your positions and that's effectively you know your total weight of ret your total return which will be you know different to probably both of those two metrics depending on you know how you've invested and when you've invested and hopefully that should make this a little bit clearer for you if you did like the video please like the video and i will catch you next time with another investment video take care guys peace